This is a brief introduction to the Structure 101 tools for managing the structure and architecture of a code base. First, let's look at what we mean by software structure. Static analysis and metrics tools typically find problems which relate to one or a few lines of code. These kinds of problems can usually be fully understood and repaired by editing the code in an IDE. Structure, on the other hand, emerges from the interdependencies and containment across a whole code base and can't be understood by simply reviewing the code. Structure is not normally visible and so tends to become increasingly complex as a project evolves. This leads to a tightly coupled code base which is fragile and hard to understand. In fact, complex invisible structure actively works against developers. Preventing this requires a structural model of the whole code base, and truly understanding structure requires visualization and interaction with such a model. Reducing structural overcomplexity is achievable by manipulation of the model. Adding dependency rules to the model lets architects articulate constraints to guide the developers, and continuously recording complexity measures and architectural compliance make structural improvement programs manageable. In this way, a simpler specified structure that is well understood by the whole team can actively work for developers. So let's look at how Structure 101 builds up its model of the code base from the source code. First, the dependencies are added to the model, and these let us ask questions like, what functions use this function? which helps us a bit during ongoing development. Then we add information about how functions are contained by files and folders, etc. Which lets us additionally ask things like which functions in this folder call which functions in which files in that folder. Then we let users add specifications to the model to constrain the allowable dependencies between containers and additionally ask about things like functions that violate any APIs that we defined. Finally, we let the user manipulate the model, for example, by moving items between containers to simulate complex repair work before starting work on the actual code. Structure 101 provides a number of separate components for working with the structural model. The main ones are called Workspace, Studio, build and dashboard. Let's have a look at each of these next. Workspace is a standalone app for browsing the structural model. It provides a project explorer, lists of structural problems such as spec violations, and an interactive structure map. It lets you browse selected details and dependencies through the overall architecture. You can navigate from the project explorer or problem list to expose the item and any of its dependent items in the structure map. From the structure map to a connected IDE or editor, and from the source back to the structure map. Workspace also shows any structural changes, such as dependencies or violations caused by recent code edits. Studio is another desktop application, which lets you analyze and edit the structural model. You can specify APIs and dependency constraints and immediately spot any violations. You can quickly find and quantify any structural overcomplexity. You can figure out how to, for example, restructure a monolith into a set of modules or services by performing drag and drop manipulations to simulate the repair work. These manipulations are stored as action lists. Any action lists or dependency constraints that you create in Studio are saved with the model for use by other Structure 101 components. Build helps with your workflow by integrating with your build or CI process to automatically analyze the structural impact of any code changes. It can check for newly introduced violations of any API or dependency constraints that were created in Studio and the same for any new sources of overcomplexity. 
You can get build to save a record of the structure and any violations to a Structure 101 repository, which can be used for future structural analysis, comparison and tracking. The final component is the dashboard. This is a single page web application which presents the contents of a Structure 101 repository previously published by Studio or Build. It tracks how much of the code base is controlled by the specs, the number of violations of those specs, as well as objective size and complexity measures. Lists show the specific items which are in violation, including whether each problem is new or repaired or got better or worse in the last build. Together, these components can be used by the team members to realize their structural priorities. Those taking an architectural perspective will use Studio to analyze the code base structure and add action lists and specs to the model. Those editing code will benefit from the visualization and architectural guidance to productively generate code that conforms to the common structural vision. Finally, technical managers use the dashboard to track the structural priorities, ensure progress and prevent backsliding.